fat again i don't know i don't logan paul i don't know what you followed man but i promise you this is to you dude hit me up i'm your weight i'm your height like you saying both that you stay broke but they must shut up and yield they're suffering for something that's real getting what up guys it's your boy that's it zach here we got daniel he's joining me today because we're actually going to do our first ever reaction video um, I think it's a really great video that we're going to react to. It's actually Logan Paul's video on his new podcast, uh, Impulsive. They have Ryan Garcia on the show. They uh, talk about con kind of Ryan's journey through his fighting career. And then Logan also touches upon his fight with KSI and also talks about the vegan diet that he went through in the training. So I thought, why not talk about and react to this? Because I'm a vegan athlete. I have been for the past five years. I've been fighting for the past 20 years. And I teach and try to give off as much about the vegan lifestyle as you can, especially when people go through it and they say it didn't work so well, right? So like Daniel's super lucky he had me by his side. He never suffered any of those symptoms. And anyone else that's been going through the change has pretty much been A-OK -okay when they follow pretty much just how to go into the switch. That's like the main thing of what happens. But specifically for a boxer, as Logan Paul was cutting weight for the boxing fights, I think he was just maybe playing wrong with the nutrition and how much he needed and everything like that. But we're going to watch the video and see what's up. So I hope you guys enjoy the reaction video. If you guys do not know who Ryan Garcia is, I guarantee you will very soon. You are a, uh, a professional boxer. I want to show some of your uh, your skills. This was your last yeah, fight, yeah? Yeah, my last fight. <laughs> Damn, bro. Out What's like really a cool about Ryan Garcia, if you guys do watch his fights, he is a young prospect and he's very good at staying calm when the fight goes in, especially at like a young age. And I think I've been shoved into like the professionals at a very young age. So I'm from Montreal, Canada, and I started training at TriStar Gym. So we're talking about every USP, UFC prospect that has ever came out. Uh, we got George St. Pierre, we got Alex Garcia, we got Rory McDonald, we got Mike Ritchie, we got Francis Carmon, and all the UFC pros that have came to our gym to train. You got John Jones, Dillashaw came, uh, Vitor Belfort came to the gym as well. So like growing up, these are the people I train with. So they, we're talking about top of the top and growing up fighting with them, sparring with them, being in their training camps. I was like 14, 15, 16 getting pulled out of high school because I had to go to their training camp. So it was like the best thing in the world. So then now as I'm going throughout the career, I decided not to go pro just because I wanted to push my amateur career as far as I could, which right now, if you guys are following channel, it's pretty much to the 2020 Olympics because if you're pro, you can't go. So I'm pushing it there. I said no to pro two years ago and I said no last year. And this year we're going for the full fetch, going for the 2020 Olympics, going for Team Canada, going for the trials, and I'm giving it all I can, and then I'm gonna go pro later. But if you watch Ryan Garcia's fight, man, he's clean, he's fast, he's quick, and he's very calm, and he doesn't let the other opponent um, phase him. So if you watch that fight, which he just knocked the guy out, Ryan was pretty calm, even though the guy was guns blazing, Ryan was calm, went for it, saw the opening, popped it, and guy was lights out if, if, if you look that. at if you listen to his story i'm sure you're going to talk about because i watched yeah, the podcast before pro. we'll keep watching it, yeah. he um he wanted to provide for his family oh it makes sense so you go to pro right yeah, away. you go pro like i'm lucky i'm very lucky i have my my dad and my mom and they're like supporting me 100 percent, and they have my back and i'm also doing my stuff on the side to help pay for all this for amateur. Right, like yeah. it's very expensive guys it's not a it's not cheap just, sport. training camps are thousands of dollars <laughs> they're like a training camp we're not talking about like a fighting career we're talking about training camp so we're talking like gloves so the boxing gloves and then that's just like the gear you got the mouth guard and then you have your coaches is your coach going to support you or do you have to pay him throughout your training camp but most coaches if they're going to invest in the fighter they're going to give you all the time to have and again i'm fortunate enough because the whole fighting career that i had i had my dad my dad pretty much trained me and the pros in the gym gave me pointers and they helped me out. And throughout my career, I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to have all these coaches from out of town come inside and train me and help me. 
I had the chance to go to the Montreal Team Canada Wrestling Club and wrestled there for two, three years. I was able to uh, compete in jiu-jitsu with like, some of the top guys in the world. I was able to go to the Pan American Games and do that. I was able to get my MMA fights. I was able to, right now, in my, I'm 24, in my boxing career, go to Canadian Championships, fight again, be sent to Poland to fight. Like All these opportunities are coming. For people who don't have the money, they can't do that. So, like, going pro is one way, so you can start getting paid. So that's why right pretty away, much yeah. he didn't have that. So he just put in the time and work. There's, there's, <laughs> like a, like, there's no mercy there, bro. Yeah. So yeah. okay, so caught him clean. And you're you're what? How old? I'm not, twenty. Oh, I'm tripping. Oh, I get hit in the head, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yo, does, does that affect you though? No, no, it doesn't. Well, not yet. I mean, it could maybe in the future. Does that worry you, bro? Because you know this like scientifically, right? Yeah. What, like, I mean, how, how, like, a, an average professional boxer, like, I mean, maybe, maybe, man, it average. depends on the guys, man. It, like, I'll give you one example. I'm sure if you guys are in the fighting career, you guys watch uh, Deontay Wilder. So, if you see some of his camps, yeah, he doesn't spar every week. Yeah. He, sp- he spars like every two weeks or at least once a week or once every three weeks. And it really depends on did he get hit hard? Yeah. <laughs> or did he not get hit hard? So, I've seen some guys get hit in the head three times a week for six to ten weeks and then go fight and then do that for five to ten years okay but then that's when it like that's like you like you guys even though you don't have a concussion you're still banging your head you're still getting the brain to toss you're still getting micro trauma yeah so you're probably just used to it but you're getting hit I can promise you that right. you're getting hit, you're getting the damage. So well, it's like what he, happened to Muhammad Ali, right? Well, Muhammad Ali, uh, Mike Tyson, yeah, uh, all, all these guys, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was old school, and now it's only really now, like now in 2019, 2018, that people are understanding that and being more cautious when it comes to that. And personally, I don't think you need a spar every week. Like you don't think that diminishes like the fact that you people like there. I mean, from what I understand, like a new school say you spar less. That doesn't diminish your skill. Because I mean, no, exactly. It's like, okay, it's the same thing as saying, am I going to go do heavy bench press every week? I see. Am I going to go do my one rep max every week? Like you're saying, no, at you're, a certain point, it becomes. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to do that. Yeah. But what you, what you are going to do is you're going to go spar. You're going to take in everything that went well, everything that didn't go well, and you're going to work with your coach, whether that be for like a week or a week and a half, and then do another sparring session and then put into effect. So you have to save your brain, man, especially in this game. Like, we're putting our life on the line. We're getting hit. Yeah. We're just talking about boxing. I did MMA. Like we're talking about elbows, knees, kicks, shin, like ground and pound, like the force. That guy that I knocked out. <laughs> Once he was knocked out, if the ref doesn't stop the fight, I keep going. And the ref didn't stop the fight. So I'm six, 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 five. So I'm like two meters tall. And at that fight, I was 200 pounds. So you could picture 200 pounds coming straight down with a right on your face after you're already knocked out. Yeah, you're not protecting yourself at all. And I hit him three times. That was that big punch on the way down. And then I hit him two more times. And then the ref tossed me off. So we're talking about like fights like that. Like you're getting hit and it's not okay. So... Taking it easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's like... Yeah. So where does the speed come from? Because you're fast as fuck. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of just working hard and then your God-given talent. Yeah. You just Either you got speed or you don't. I'm going to agree with that, but I'm also going to say I'm sure he started young. So like I did, my mom and dad put me in fighting when I was four years old. They put me in gymnastics. They put me in um, wrestling. They put me in jiu-jitsu. They put me in football. They put me in soccer. They put me in every single... Port- they put me in dancing. So we're talking about coordination here, footwork and everything. Right now, when I'm not in fighting, I'm 220. If you guys see me fight or have seen me fight or Daniel has seen me fight, I'm very fast for my weight. And people yeah, are very shocked about that. Very true. I'm very, very fast for my weight. And the reason being is you know, gen- genetics, gone given talent. Yes, but I also started training my nervous system and my body at such a young age. You've had all those years. So I've all those it. years from my muscle fibers to adapt for that. So that's why I have what I have. Yes, genetics does come into play, but hard work and dedication and being able to start at a young age and to keep going and to really set my nervous system around that type of training allows me to be 
the speed and the strength that I have now. So that's by the way, like, do you think usually because you and Ryan Gers here are obviously completely different weight classes? Yeah. But do you think like someone like him inherently because he's smaller is faster or? That's not really true. No, for sure. But yeah, it's like, like a, obviously you're gonna hit harder because you have a harder mat. You're bigger, right? Yeah, but that that's like true and not true. Like, look at the typical equation: like mass time acceleration. Yeah, right? exactly. So it's like force equals mass time acceleration. Yeah, so, so it's the combination of both. Yeah, you need both, right? Okay. So, like I'm saying, I hit hard because I'm fast. And but I have a little bit of weight on me. Yeah. But we're talking about guys that I fight or that are like yeah, two sixty, it. so right? Like weight class. It's like you but can't no. Compare. But I'm saying just like take Alex Garcia. Yeah. If he He's fought fast. a guy that was like 180, Alex would probably knock him out. Oh, well, I mean... Because of yeah. the speed. Right, exactly. So if you add the speed with the, accelera- uh, the uh, acceleration the mass. with the mass, yeah. he has it. So why am, able, why, am, why am I able to hit so hard? I'm fast and, and I have the weight. Yeah, you have the weight. That's pretty much that's all. Hundred or so pounds. You see my fight? I mean, your fight was great, and Jake's fight was great. I was actually surprised by both of you guys. I I thought you guys, honestly, I was just a person. I was like, I think they're gonna suck. Like, honestly, I'm not. I'm not gonna bullshit. Like, I thought you guys were gonna just be trash. (laughs) But both of you guys had good jabs, and it was actually entertaining. Like, I'm I'm not a hater, so I think it's entertaining. I feel you. I'm gonna say it. He stopped um, throwing his jab. Yeah, that's what I think you went a little wrong. Tell me if this has happened to you, Uh, because I've never you've you've had professional fights with big audiences. I've never I've never done that. So I found um, in hindsight when my coach was telling me what to do in the corner Mm -hmm. in between rounds, I was not listening. It was Mm -hmm. in one ear out the other. I was like, let me fucking kill him. Yeah, you know what? How do you get over that? It's it's just I think experience. I mean, it's so crazy where you could do something in the gym every day. And do it over and over again. But once you get to the arena and everybody's like like expecting you to do something. Completely different. And then your emotions, you'll get tired faster. Everything Dog. will just feel like all fucked up. It's like what everything. The fuck? Yeah. Everything. So what fight did it's did that feeling stop happening for you? I think just my last fight. I'm not what? kidding. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm sorry. Your nineteen fight. Seven, yeah. Just a little thing. This is why I love Muay Thai so much, because when you go to Thailand. Some of these pro fighters have like 450 fights. So like they don't get that at all. It's like it's gone. What do you mean? Oh, right. Yeah. Like they're There's not that, scared. They, they don't get that. So like if you see their fights, especially like two top guys, they're going at 100% and there's like nothing that fatigues well, them. Hold on. If they have 400 fights, they probably like have they started, more. They started when they were like 12. But they also probably have like not two three fights a year they have oh yeah they have like 15 fights fights a year or more oh yeah that's it okay like it's a lot it's a lot like in thailand they're they're very smart but they're very crazy as well so they'll go hard on you but if you just finish the fight and you're okay like you didn't get hit hard they'll find you another fight like three weeks later damn so it's only feel like getting messed up especially like i find after a big tournament that i have like uh poland that one fight gave me like a year of experience like yeah just to fight itself because again if you watch my videos that i talked about i got put in a predicament that i wasn't supposed to be put in i was told that i was going to fight someone that was going to be my weight which was close to 200 so like 205 so i cut down to it the guy ended up being 256 pounds so it was like but I, i'm not going to say no because i've fought guys heavier and that weight before so That's automatically i went I know, and Daniel wasn't with me for this tournament, but like, I also posted on Instagram of like the weigh-ins, and this guy was trying to intimidate me like crazy, yeah, and I was smiling <laughs> because like at a, at that point I wasn't scared. I was like, like yeah, well, I, why am I nervous? And then when I went into the fight, wasn't nervous, and this oh, guy no? came, this guy came out glum, like guns blazing, oh, like rushing me. The ring was so small, <laughs> like it was two giants. One step back, you're on the rope. <laughs> for us like a step back <laughs> That's and one step back and we're in the middle so it was like insane yeah and what do you do stay calm smile enjoy the fight like i had no nerves yeah i was nerves like yeah well you nervous, were yeah but i was like very just it was it was like my time to just have fun and do what i do did you and, have that though when you were a little younger you got nervous before fights oh yeah, yeah man. when i was like 16 sparring with the the pros and guys and, oh, you get and my, some of my fights i was like so nervous but then what helped me a lot was because i fought them and sparred with them when i went uh, to my fights i was like well, this guy has nothing on the guys <laughs> i fought like this guy has zero on what i got so i go in there and i'm like oh let's go like yeah you're pumped and like inside i was like 
oh, let's go. Like, banging yeah. on my chest. You know what I mean? Oh, like, if you, again, another pro super heavyweight champion, Berman Stavern. 260 pounds, world champion. I fought with him. I sparred with him. I went to Money Mayweather's camp to train with him. I'm going again this year to go train with him. That's you, you spar and fight with somebody like that. You're you not go, scared. Of versus you're not the... scared to go against like other people. So, again, guys, training camp should be the hardest freaking thing ever. Uh, now I've started training with this trainer named Eddie Reynoso. Um, it's also Canelo's trainer. I did see that. That's yeah. a big fucking big deal, move. bro. Congrats. Yeah, yeah because uh, you know you need to go to the next level. You need more experience. Yeah. Um, of course, I keep my dad there, but hell yeah. But you have to, you know, level up sometimes. Yeah. My dad's there. <laughs> My dad's there now. In the past, my dad, like I said, used to train me. He doesn't train me anymore because we butt head so much. I think just over the years, being with me, uh, being at home together, being in the gym together, going to every fight together, being in my corner, um, just... <laughs> you guys are also very alike. Yeah, I know. You guys yeah. are pretty much like almost the same person. So you'll, you'll get into... Yeah, so we, can, we yeah. butt heads a lot. And there'd be times where like, we do pad work and I'm not like thinking about the, the technique. I'm thinking about hitting it as hard as I can. So like my dad could be like, that hurts. I don't want to hold pads anymore because <laughs> like we're so annoyed with each other. Yeah. And it was just very toxic. So I pretty much ended that with my dad. But I have my dad with me now. And I train with a coach now here in Montreal um, at Underdog Boxing Gym. His name is Lou. Um Lou and Mike Mufa, they both own Under the Boxing Gym. Lou is my main coach, and Mike Mufa is there on the side helping me. Whenever Lou can't or anything, and the whole team there is like, it's really like family. So they've been helping me for the past like year and a half, two years, and to really structure me to help my boxing technique. Because like, again, I was an MMA fighter first. That whole crew there is like, it's positivity from like start to end. Once you enter the gym, there's like no negativity there. When you spar, everyone is there watching you. Like every weight, every guy that, every fighter that's there, pro, not pro, uh, pro, not pro, amateur, uh, semi-pro, like semi-pro to me is on a national team, the junior nationals, like yeah. all these, all these guys are there supporting you, watching your sparring sessions, not and learning. Learn, like they're learning yeah. we're, we're always studying but they're learning and they're also there to have your back so even though it's like their turn to go into the ring after you finish sparring you get like that prop they're like good rounds act like good job and you'll get some guys to be like yo fuck good uppercut like it's Excellent. always positive mindset there that's what makes the training camp so much fun and good and it's hard like i promise you as the weeks get close to the fight it gets harder and harder and harder like i said because you want that camp to be hard so i'm really grateful to have that and have the opportunity to be training there with those coaches, with that team, and also have my dad on the side. Um, doing the same thing almost every day. So you wake up, I run at seven, right? Run hard five miles, okay. but you can't run it light. You got to run it hard. So yeah. you have to be dripping by the time you're done. No, like soft job. Yeah, yeah. Then from there at 12, you train um, boxing for three hours. So 12. What the fuck? That's yeah. longer than you were. I, I love, I mean, it's just like a regular job, right? Yeah. And then after that, you rest for a little bit. And then uh, I think on every other day, you go to like um, the gym, understand. work on, you know, a little bit of arms. But you don't lift a lot. You don't ever lift a lot. Um, then you might go into the sauna a little bit. Yeah. So. Well, well, for him, he doesn't want to gain weight, right? He wants to stay in his weight category. Yeah. Because well, so, he's like skinny. He has but so do I. I want to stay in my weight category. Right. right? But, like I yeah, fight, yeah. I fight at 200. Guys, I'm six six. I'm saying, I'm saying, before you were lighter and you've been, you've been lifting weights yeah. to get heavier and lo like lose body fat. Yeah. So like usually, what I like right. to do is between fights or like tournaments, I try to put on as much muscle mass as I can, and then cut down, the and fat. then cut down. So like from last year to this year, I think I put on roughly three pounds of muscle. It's not much, but yeah, it is a lot when it comes to the fight because then I train that muscle to be boxing specific right. and everything. So like right. I'm I'm ready to go. So. You can use the. Uh, I can use that extra muscle. It was like what Ross was saying. Like your your size of muscles is kind of your potential. Exactly. So like I I can be at my greatest mass. I could be two hundred and eighteen pounds at five percent body fat. That's that's insane. That's harsh. Yeah, which is a big ass jacked. <laughs> yeah, that's motherfucker. That's a, lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So right now I'm like right now I'm two fifteen and I have roughly. 12 12% body fat 13% body fat at the end of this camp when I fight I'm going to be at 
seven percent body fat and i'll be 200 pounds so that means i have the potential to gain roughly 10 to 15 more pounds of muscle which i will be spreading out these next like have you found a couple that, of years that growing get, getting that extra three pounds is hard no no no. but not not how hard is has it actually helped you with your boxing oh yeah yeah like my punches are hard they're now, stiff right? they're, they're stiff they're hard the mass is there like I gained that mass, but then I trained the speed and As I well. trained the technique. So like now my liver shots or my hook or just a jab, <laughs> my jab is stiff. My jab yeah. hurts. Yeah. So if you're hurting someone with a jab, imagine a two, a body shot, a seven. Like I remember getting a small hit from you and you weren't even trying and it hurt. <laughs> yeah. <it was> practice. <laughs> a little bit out and then um, just swimming. Swimming. You swim as well? Yeah, swim as well. I fucking hate swimming. What, what about what you eat? Yes. Oh, that's a big thing. We have like a, a like a team chef, I yeah. guess you would say. And oh, they uh, take off all the fat on the my food own chef. and make you sure you're eating clean. Could you ever imagine doing your training as a vegan? I don't know. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I think you just don't know how to do that. Little statement right there. I don't think I would have the energy to do all the work I am being a vegan. So I have nothing against vegans though. Not so. Did you know before his last fight he was vegan the whole what? run up? Yeah. And he and 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 so Spencer's a vegan. Yeah. So is Andre. And, and so is Andre. And, and so and by the way, by the way, so are we right now oh for the month God. of January. Okay. You're surrounded by hey, January. You guys should go check out my veganuary that's happening for the whole month. Recipes, easy uh, transition meals for you guys to adopt a vegan diet. Vegan Ve right now, but right, he, he actually <laughs> come on, please. <laughs> he's about to throw. He's yeah, yeah, about to throw. Yeah, yeah. But but he I actually got... he actually looked at that as possibly a contributing factor to his yeah you, feeling you, kind of weak in the muscle. Spencer doesn't like that, but we well I I, I train you know I I'm on Spencer's side. I, I still got work to do. I did an Iron Man, completely yeah, vegan. Did. I pulled nice. that off. Yes, I've got another one that I'm working on right now. Yeah, so nice. how, how different is that? Like, because Spencer's saying, like, his point of view is, I was vegan Iron Man and I was fine. Yeah. But then they're going, oh, but I, we were vegan boxers. How different would an Iron Man from a boxing match be? Well, one, it's not not really. Like Logan Paul did what? The fight was Th three four rounds, five, four or five rounds. It was a little more. I don't know. Whatever. I know it wasn't a 12 round no, fight. That's for sure. Not. I know it was anywhere between, f I think it was four rounds. It was four rounds. They had four rounds in three minutes. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong. Don't quote me. I'm just saying I'm, what I remember. I think it was four. Anyways, it was on the lower side. Of it was rounds. on the lower yeah. side. So if you're looking at that, Logan and KSI fought for what? Uh, 16 minutes total. Four rounds, three minutes is yeah. 12. And then a minute each round of rest. So that's nowhere near an that's Iron no, Man. That's nowhere near an Iron Man. So like the diet is really much just going to change, but nothing should make you weak unless you're just off unless you weren't getting in what you need like iron or b12 or any of the other anything other stuff, yeah. anything anything can make you feel bad like people are like oh if you're vitamin a deficient you'll feel like this or this or anything salt like not having enough salt will make you have a headache cramps want to vomit feel like shit sleepy like yeah we're talking about micronutrients electrolytes protein Right. On a vegan diet, you don't need to worry about carbs. <laughs> like yeah. you're getting carbs. Fat. Again, I don't know. I don't. Logan Paul. I don't know what you followed, man. But I promise you, this is to you, dude. Hit me up. I'm your weight. I'm your height. We're roughly the same. You're a little heavier than. I'm me. a little heavier than you. I'm a little <laughs> taller than you. A little bit. Just a little bit. I'm a Canadian boxer. I'm. I'm on Team, team Quebec. I'm number two in all of Canada. I've been vegan for five years. I've been fighting for five years as a vegan. I compete at a national level as a vegan. So I just think you're off, dude. I'm not hating. Like, I love your shit, dude. I watch it all the time. But me and him watch you, like, all the time. Like, Entertaining. Yeah. I don't think you were exhausted because of the diet. I think you were, you, you think it was a possible factor just because you weren't on point. And again, you might have had a nutritionist. With my experience with nutritionists, they know fuck all. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest way because like I know nutritionists that know their shit. But nutritionist isn't a set meal plan for like somebody. But they do, they do learn how to play with different diets to help that person like what's going to work for them. Because what works for them is not going to work for somebody else. Yeah. But a vegan diet isn't something that you can say, oh, it only works for that person. No, a vegan diet can work for everybody. Like, yeah. 
that's that's the point now if you're talking about are they more carb dominant or more fat dominant that's a completely different story and can you test that out is that something you test yeah it's on your feeling dude like i'm guys i'm doing for the first time in a training camp i'm doing a vegan ketogenic diet for a camp so we're talking about like 100 grams of carbs i know People that might be watching this are like, oh, Zach, but like a vegan keto or a ketogenic diet typically is like 20 to 30 grams of carbs. Yes, but those are for average individuals. When you're at like a semi-pro elite type athletes, that's also crazy because I'm not just any athlete. You could ask Daniel. I am insane when it comes to training and food. Like, yeah. Yeah, very and I have athlete friends that are at that status too, and they're nothing like that. Like they're athletes, but they're not that type of you know like <laughs> like they're not like that well, but you're just very very strict with yourself i'm very strict yeah. like i have so much self-discipline <laughs> which just came through the motivation that i have for going to where i want to go yeah. which i'm sure alex garcia does exactly the same but alex garcia bro this is for you too man i know you have no hate against vegans and you can't imagine how to do it watch my channel <laughs> like watch my channel i'm definitely going to send you a, a dm or a message and comment because you could do it dude it's better for your health. The weight cut is 10 times easier. There's a Montreal boxer right now who's a pro boxer. His name is Shaquille Finn. Yeah. Shaq, vegan. you know my boy? He went vegan, dude. He got a little bit of tips from me, asked me about it. He did a whole bunch of research himself, did it all himself. He's like top of top right now. He feels great. His weight yeah. cuts are super easy. He feels super strong. He, won, he won his last yeah, fight. He's, right? he's yeah, won, he's won his couple last fights. Yeah. yeah, I think he had three fights as a vegan and like... One after the other. One after another, so... It's not hard. You just, you guys need to know like how to structure it. So yeah, let's see what else they say. For May. So, you know, I can only train from my experience. Right. Logan's much bigger than me though. Yeah. So I can't say I'm, just because I can do I mean, it, he can do it. Yeah. You know, it's a different sport. Yeah. Uh, it, it does take a lot, a very specific diet to be able to handle that capacity of working out. Bro, it's gotta be, it's gotta yeah. be just the way we were, we were built. Like my muscles naturally are just my arms are huge, hey, bro. bro like, your your biceps side, are about the size of my face. I look like a fat neck. kid, like from the side, bro. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. hey, yeah. bro I don't know. Me too. I look like a fat kid from the side of my arms. <laughs> Me too. I'm just as big as you, bud. I'm just Logan, but I I don't know. I contribute. I, I had to stop being vegan a month before the fight. I went back to eating oh, meat. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I think it did, did a good job, though. Yeah, so he stopped being vegan a month before the fight. Yeah. That's a horrible idea, yeah. by the way. But That's what I was just like. Because I remember you telling me, like, once you go vegan, I, I guess it's after a while, you, there's certain enzymes in your body that, like, diminish. Yeah, guys, your, your body, yeah, but let's like, say your body's not stupid. Your body's very smart. It's actually way smarter than you think, and it's not going to work more than it needs to because it, yeah. likes, it likes that balance, that homeostatic balance. So going vegan, you're, like, taking away receptors and enzymes that don't need to break down dairy or cheese or lactose, which, number one, can't be broken down anyways. So that's what causes the acidity and then uh, chain of events. And the if meat. If you want to know more, check out. If you want to know more, go check out. I'm not going to do it here. But, and the meat and the, the heme iron, not having the anti inflammatory effects you're getting, it's like so strong on a vegan diet. And then a month before your fight, Logan, you switch your diet like mid camp. Dude, man, it, it, it took a toll on your body for sure. I'm like, there's no doubt in my mind. And just from experience, I'm not saying this, I'm not trying to bash you, but. I actually did an experiment where I ate meat for about, I think it was five months, five months. Yeah. yeah I did I five months and I didn't do any bought meat. It was hunted, <laughs> it was hunted. Um, really in Mon it. in Montreal, like kind of more North for science purposes. Cause I think it should be out there and there's not a lot of people that want to put their body on the line to do these experiments. My infl inflammation went up. My, uh, I started getting plaque buildup. We did muscle biopsies. Um, the enz enzymatic changes happened where like my bodies needed the receptors again to come back. What was surprising though is that I didn't feel sick because I thought I would have felt sick. But you did sick. it very gradually. Yeah, I did I very remember. gradually too. You had I, I, wasn't a in, bit. I wasn't dumb about it either. So like I started with like maybe two meals out of my whole week with a deer <laughs> yeah. in it. And then I had, as the weeks went by, I started having like salmon wild caught from the Inuits that we have up here. Yeah. Like it primes the salmon's like this freaking big. So everything that 
we say on a vegan diet that's gonna happen and heal you started coming back. I have insanely horrible allergies. And on this vegan diet, I've pretty much eliminated every single seasonal allergy that I have. My nose sounds stuffy and I always am stuffy for the past like 10 years because I broke my nose twice. <laughs> and I have deviated septum and one of my nostrils is closed. And if I want to do the surgery, I have to take six months off boxing and that is not happening. So I am going to do the surgery later. When you go pro? Before I go pro. Yeah, sign the contract, go pro, and then I'll fix my nose. Yeah. But for now, staying like this. So, so you can look as pretty as Ryan Garcia. I can look as pretty. Yeah. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I think what you did when you changed, that's what caused you that, uh, to feel like that. That's, if, that's, if you're thinking that's one of the factors that made well, you. I, I think he changed after. Like he felt that way and then he changed. And then he continued the camp. And then he continued, like for the last month before the fight. Well, if he changed, that means he only like started really going at it like three, three but, weeks. But I think he felt shitty first. Yeah, hundred percent. And then he changed. So well, we we don't know because he didn't. He didn't yeah, he didn't we, we don't know nothing. Right? We're not assuming anything. Like, I'm just saying, listening to what you're saying here. Call, call him. Yeah, dude, Logan, <laughs> hit me up, dude. I'm in Canada. I'm not that far away. He Montreal, actually. I know my shit. Yeah. Trust. Yeah. So let's see what else. Like leaning says. you out and oh like God, getting you into like yeah. a good, a good, you know, manageable yeah. weight. Yeah, I Did was you just feel ripped. Did you look? I was dummy? fucking yoked. Bro, his, abs, he's yoked. He, yeah. his abs had abs. Oh, oh, like shit. it was like, yo, he had like a twenty pack, bro. But like, plus we got I'm, levels measured too by a nutritionist, and there wasn't anything. The nutritionist like never said anything. There was there was nothing deficient right. in your levels. I, it could have been in your mind. Uh, your nah, mind bro. Could, no? I was losing. You it? I was losing two pounds a day. I had oh, never been that light yeah. since I uh, cut weight for this movie I did called The Thinning. Um, so your nutritionist was doing that? Two pounds a day means you were not eating as... That's like amount. water weight, though. For sure. I, I mean, it you can't, could you be, can't but be losing. I'm assuming no water weight. If you're losing two pounds a day... Two, how, how much, how much weight did you have to lose, bud? <laughs> two pounds no, no, a day? No, no, but he said he... The, was he losing it, like, not on purpose, or was he losing it on purpose? Well, no, because you had to cut for the fight. Okay, okay, bit. okay. Yeah. Um, and, like, literally, like, had to get out of bed... In the morning by like lifting my own legs, like just like salt. Wait, what? Wait, Wait what was, was it like there was there a weight class in your fight? Yeah, but it, I wasn't doing it for weight. I was just doing it for health. <laughs> bro, you should, you should have just kept eating, bro. I, I think, I, I also think. Yes. You should have kept eating. <laughs> your, your appetite's pretty low for the, for the, for a, for a male your size. Me? Yeah. Uh, Whoa. You, you don't you eat that much, food. bro. You call me I know. a bitch. I, 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 I kind of felt that. Yo, I kind of felt that. I was saying it in the nice way, but in the you know non -wise, nice way, you're a bitch, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you eat like a bitch, but he didn't say that. Bro, but he was eating like Ryan four. He was eating like four bowls of like stick stem, oh, <laughs> oh, tree man. bark, bro, all that shit. Grass. And it just wasn't doing it, bro. The grass was him, crazy. Grass yeah. was lit, dude. It was crazy. It's got a high. Protein value, no, it doesn't. Yo, so you, you're training under Canelo, yes? Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I think you were just under calories. And talking about your legs coming out of bed, because I felt that before, I've, that's, I've, I've targeted to an electrolyte imbalance. And when I was in camp, I'm sure you did everything you can to train for this fight. Like knowing you and your brother, that's 100% sure what you guys have done. I think you were losing a lot of electrolytes. I don't know if you were replenishing them. I'm not assuming. It's a question that I'm asking you through the camera. I think your electrolytes were off because I've noticed in, I think it was two camps ago, I felt like shit. It was one of the worst fights I've ever had. I was like, I was, Daniel came to watch and he was like, Oh, I remember that. that. Yeah. You were not performing. I was like, yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't throw. In the fight, I'm standing still. Paused. I paused and just stood still wow. and then didn't move. <laughs> uh, bro, I remember I was sitting next to your dad. Your dad was screaming. Yeah, my dad was, was like, fucking, was like, fucking go. <laughs> it was and so I bad. Go and like, I had to dig somewhere in me in the fight the last minute to like try to knock this guy out. And that's crazy. It happened to you during the fight. Yeah, though. During the fight. Oh my god. So like, and it was the electrolyte imbalance because what I did was I lost twelve pounds in two hours. That's when you did that insane weight. I did cut. that insane uh, weight cut. And water cut yeah and i listen to people when i shouldn't have so i'm not doing that anymore and what was oh man this was so bad we tried to iv me 
Oh yeah. To okay, replenish the fluids that I lost and put roughly a liter and a half back that, in. That shit was nasty. Daniel was staring at me. Needles. I hate needles. Needles suck. Daniel was staring at me and I'm like uh, this and my mom is shoving okay. the needle in. It's like the a, first one goes in and bends. Oh my god. So then when she Don't tries to me. put the fluid, it wasn't working. So we take it out. And this hurts because the little needle that she used, that was the first one. It wasn't one a bent. little, it was a no, big That ass was the fucking... first one. That was the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Then she took another one that was I'm like fucking... thicker. It was huge. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> it was one of those needles that started really small, but they just got thicker and yeah, thicker. Yeah, it's like, like, oh, I was in, in so it. much pain. Uh, that needle bent. Uh, and then we used the one last one on the other arm, and the fluid just didn't want to go. Like the blood came out like it's supposed to, but the fluid didn't want to go in. So my body was like, <laughs> it's like fuck it you. was like uh, and it was horrible so what what do we have to do so like i went on extreme measures and i bought pediolite which is like baby yeah. gatorade which has like every electrolyte and micronutrient i was fucking drinking away but my fight was in four hours yeah i remember that because amateur boxing olympic boxing you weigh in and you fight on the same day which is just like wrestling which logan paul you've said before it's so like you weigh in and fight the same day. It's the same thing in the boxing um, world, amateur boxing, amateur boxing yeah. world, like Olympic boxing world. So I was trying to chug and chug and chug and drink, but like I can't because my stomach was so small and then I don't want to feel like shit because I had to fight, but then I fought and I still feel like shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like I've been through it too, dude. I've screwed up, but I think you could have, you could have strived immensely if you just had someone else that has been through it to kind of guide you and i'm like if you want to train man and hit me up logan i'm gonna be in vegas for like about a week um it's because i'm fighting for team canada tryouts again and um i'm gonna be there for a week so if you see this video hit me up dude like It'd be cool if you want pointers or you want someone that goes through it and does it and does the weight cuts and eats the vegan food and eats the plant-based lifestyle and doesn't feel weak and feel strong and like fucking yoked like you two. <laughs> like, hit me up, bro. Team Canelo. Team Canelo. That's a big deal. Because yeah. um, is he? he's undefeated, yeah? The, the answer, bro, different level. The answer, bro, I think you should save. Yeah. Save your money, yeah, kids. Don't Save. watch Floyd Mayweather. Yes. <laughs> do what that don't do is. whatever yo. he did. Because that's not how you do it. Straight, yo, straight Save up. it and invest in property. Yeah. Now, actually, see, I wouldn't know. So. $300 million twice. <laughs> it's pretty hard. But they're right, too. Like, no, they're right. You, you I'm just get saying, so used I'm to making like, that much money. If you make $300 million twice, like, yeah, you're yeah. going to go... Uh, uh -huh. So Spencer got his first bag off of, off impulsive. First thing he the yeah. first thing he did was buy a two hundred fifty thousand dollar chain, bro. Oh my this god, mine, bro! Hey. One bag, bro. There's like another forty five minutes to this reaction. Well, reaction to this podcast, but pretty much wanted to see the beginning because uh, main points. Yeah, just like the main points of how me and Ryan Garcia pretty much are the same. How you relate to him. like yeah. we relate really similarly, but then also how I relate to you, Logan. And like what you try to do, your fight that you had versus KSI and you going for the vegan diet and you doing Veganuary and not feeling good on the vegan diet and everything like that. And Ryan, for you, keep going, bro. Like I watch your shit. You're awesome. And I think you could do it on a vegan diet as well. <laughs> so like don't knock it till you try it. You don't know. But again, I've done it. I'm, I am doing it. I continue to do it. And yeah. So I hope you guys like this reaction video. Give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, subscribe so you guys know when videos do come out. Uh, 2019 is a big year. We've got a lot coming out, a lot of things happening. Big year for me, big year for Daniel. So many things, so many goals to achieve and check off because I know they're going to happen. For sure. And uh, yeah, but Logan Paul, dude, hit me up. Good luck for both of you guys. Yeah, good luck for both of you guys. for your goal in May and Logan Paul for the rematch. We want to see that. I want to see that. If you, got, you need a sparring partner... You need a guy <laughs> right here. All right, Him, that's no. it. It's yeah, Daniel. Hey, He's a no, smart no, partner. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. What it's your boy. That's it, Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow. You want a knee? Ugh. Knee. Peace. Still jotting the names of lives that the government's killed. They fighting with picket signs while you shove them with shields. You circling around, searching to. That's it.